uh, 2024, and welcome to another episode of The Women Your Mother Warned You About. Now entering its sixth year uh, as a podcast. Similar to dog years, it's kind of a long time. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you some stats. Much has happened over the past five years. This is a solo episode today to kick off the new year, which is year six for us. So let's talk a little bit about some historical kind of matter of fact stats. When the show first launched in January 2019, there were 337,000 podcasts out there. And podcasting has been around for since like 2006. And if you got in on the ground floor, you're famous, making a lot of money. Otherwise, you're part of a lot of noise. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. The number spiked up to slightly over a million shows in 2020. And then, interestingly, dropped back down to 173,000 in 2022. I don't know what the 2023 numbers were, but that's pretty significant that when this show started... Over five years ago, 337,000, 2022, 173,000. Reports show that COVID was a big contributor to podcast production. Obviously, people were at home trying to find things to do. And then the decrease of shows kind of were indicative when things started to calm down. Maybe there wasn't as much interest. I think some of it, too, is people don't realize how much work goes into podcasting. So Producing a podcast is not for the faint of heart. It requires work and consistency. Consistency is hard for some people. I got to say, as a creative, sometimes consistency is hard. I'd like to, uh, yeah, it's been pointed out to me that I like to chase shiny things. And I do, because that's creativity at its finest. You just need to know how to hone it in. But I will say that podcasting has been one of the things that, for me, has been a very consistent practice. I have managed to be very consistent with having a show every single week for five years. And it's also, it's a good reminder that sometimes all we need to do is master one thing. We don't have to have many things that we're doing. Find one thing that we can be consistent with. So if you're new to the show, I'm going to give you a historical recap of the show and an announcement of where the show is heading. For starters, you can see I'm already using a different space. This is the other side of my studio. This is really my office, a more personal space. The brick wall reminds me of my hometown of Chicago and my condo there that I had to give up when I moved to the South. I say give up, but, you know, it's, I just miss it. I miss it. It just reminds me of home. So let's talk a little bit about historical. My original co-host, Rachel Pitts, at the time, Rachel, well, a different last name. I'll just leave it at that. She and I created the show back in late 2018 because we wanted a platform where we could be 100% ourselves, exactly as we are, and not worry about who and what others wanted us to be as women and as women in business and as women in our community and all of those things. So we were and sometimes still are tired of trying to fit into others' agendas and molds and where they think we should be. So we started kind of brainstorming the concept of the show, and you can go back to episode one and hear a lot of this in detail, but we started brainstorming wanting to be able to create this platform where we could say what we want and say what we thought and be exactly who we are. And even the evolution of like creating the name of the show, it was like a placeholder because we couldn't come up with anything better. Um, And what we've loved about it since is that women your mother warned you about can be spun into anything at any point. And that was sort of the marketing magic behind choosing that name and then trademarking it, that we could do almost anything with it. It's a little bit sassy, but really what it's about is it's just being exactly who you are without worrying about what people want you to be. And so that was the concept of it. We wanted to be able to like talk freely about just trying to get through the work day and the business day and the sales game and the momming and the wifing and the dog momming and all of the things. And that's kind of what got it going as an idea. I mentioned the show concept to two men at that time. One, a mentor of mine, Keith Walters, a really brilliant businessman and leader strategist. 
And Jeffrey Gittimer, a little bit different from Keith Walters. Jeffrey Gittimer, a sales icon, not everyone's cup of tea. I don't know. There's something about Jeffrey that I resonate with and maybe because he reminds me of my truck driving dad. But mention the show to the two of them. Keith loved the idea. He thought it was a cool concept. So he became a partner and an investor. He offered that up to help us develop the show, to help us like get an ad agency and design all the things and make all the things happen and have a PR launch and all those things and become a, an occasional co-host. And then Jeffrey loved the idea of having a podcast in the sales space for women by women. So he actually, before we even launched the show, asked us to be part of his Sell or Die podcast network. And there we go. We were off to the races, creating a show for both men and women, uh, spotlighting how to be successful in life and in business. So in our first year in 2019, Rachel and I both experienced personal life changes. I think we experience them every year. Let's be real. She remarried husband. And she's at a husband number three. And I left husband number one at that time. As usual, we were both juggling all the things, always being real, raw, relevant, and often irreverent. As we all know, 2020 was tumultuous in many ways for the whole world. And we just kept plugging away at the show, evolving. We struggled with each other at times just because of the stresses of life and what we were all experiencing as a society how it was impacting us personally, and then how that started to impact how we did the show. Things came to a head that summer as I lost both my businesses, my improv business, which is back in business, and my training business. And I lost those due to COVID, especially my brick and mortar location, got shut down, didn't have a choice. And then the George Floyd incident. I don't know if everybody remembers that. It became really heated and we started having like disagreements about conversations we wanted to have around that. And it just stirred up all of these emotions, having these challenging conversations. And that is the infamous time when Rachel quit the first time, quit the show in an email, which infuriated me. If you know me, I like having conversations. Do not put things in emails or text messages. Not the way to have a difficult conversation. Keith, being the smart man that he was, would not mediate for us, even though I asked him to. He asked us to work things out on our own, which we did through the use of Marco Polo. I'm not sure if you're, if you know that app, it is a video app and we send each other messages, video messages, so you can see and hear um, what's going on, but without interrupting each other. And it's interesting because to this day, we still use that Marco Polo app um, as actually a way for like ideation and innovation and um, sharing ideas and bouncing ideas. And um, if you've heard us talk about it, we like to record ourselves in the, the macho voice, which is really funny. You cannot stay mad at someone when you're listening to them in a ridiculous macho voice. So major way that we now communicate as a result of that. It really helped us work out our differences. It was like a virtual talking stick. Like I get to talk, you get to talk. I get to talk, you get to talk. We eventually work things out. We continue to grow together and learn how to manage disagreements regarding the show and our own personal views. And just as an aside, like we weren't really disagreeing on points of view in the heated times. We just didn't know how to navigate them. And so those were the challenges that we were having that we had to work out. And we basically mastered the art of yes and for anybody who's familiar with that, of just really listening and validating each other. At some point in 2020, I don't remember when this happened, Gittimer decided to dissolve the Seller Die podcast network as far as like having other people in the network, which also include including my buddy Jeff Bajoric. Some of you may know him, a lot of you know him, but I refer to him as my fractional co-host because he comes on to the show once in a while. So during that time, he Gittimer decided to move on. So we went on our own to continue to produce the show. And the show then moved over to Sales Gravy when I joined Sales Gravy. And Jeb Blunt was really excited at that time to bring the show, bring a show for women under his umbrella at Sales Gravy. And he became the sole sponsor, giving us the opportunity to feature dozens of sales thought leaders, especially those featured at the Outbound Conference. Rachel and I continued through 2021 
(laughs) when she quit me again, this time to focus on other dreams and endeavors, things that she wanted to do and pursue. And it just wasn't a fit for her anymore with where she was at that time. While I hated losing her, it was time for her to spread her wings and focus. She has a tendency to be a squirrel chasing shiny objects, more so than me, believe it or not. And I'm allowed to say that because she started out as a coaching client many years ago and I knew how she functioned and how she worked. And then we created that show, but she became my kind of best ride or die friend and still is and still comes on the show. She is known as the recovering co-host of the show, makes guest appearances throughout the year and also shares my producer, Nian, because now she's producing her own podcast about breath work and mindset, and that's her secret sauce these days. 2022 kicked off with Susanna Gray Jones, the British gal that I constantly tried to impersonate. That wasn't good. She, too, had joined Sales Gravy as a trainer, and I love the contrast that we had between us as show hosts. In comedy, it's all about contrast. When you have that contrast, it just creates great laughter and giggles. And together we were both funny and brilliant with our combined insights and especially in our lost in translation moments. Go back and listen to some of those. They are really great. I learned a lot of things, but that also culturally, that expanded us culturally to just talk about what ways, the ways things are done across the pond. It also opened this show up to a bigger international audience. And that was really awesome. We struggled with the time difference and just got two little kids and that played into the time difference. So when it came to recording shows, that became a challenge, especially when she picked up and moved to Dubai, which put even more hours between us. And then she stopped working at Sales Gravy as well. So it was really just kind of hard. And that was another tough time to be quit on again. So we parted as friends. And once again, we share a producer as she now is also doing her own solo podcast focused on recruiters. There appears to be a pattern here. Maybe I help produce your podcast. I, I think I'm, I've am i become known for helping people like start producing their own podcasts. Maybe that could be another side hustle for me. I don't know. So I started 2023 running solo with my fractional and recovering co-hosts, as well as doing solo episodes and bringing back some of my favorite guests. Coming from an improv background, I love the collaborative approach. This is cool talking to you, especially if you're watching me on YouTube, but I like having someone to banter with. I I like the collaboration. Having a co-host or dynamic guest always makes the show more interesting, in my opinion. But with that being said, I really have come to enjoy being on my own again, like I was with my very first show, The Pivotal Leader, which launched in 2016. And you can still find those shows out there. I found a new groove and a rhythm. People say I've gotten even better at podcasting. I don't know. I just really am in a really good groove. It could go back to the fact that I started in radio and television. That could play a part in it. I've always had a passion for it. Towards the end of 2023, I connected with Tatiana Fiera. Ugh, just love her as a guest. And we've done a series of shows on internal and external customer experience. This has become a true space of passion for me to talk about. And you're going to probably see a little bit more of that coming in 2024 as we deep dig in deeper on that. Uh, And speaking of 2024, here we are, a new year with new ideas, new sponsors, and a new approach and a new studio. What does that mean, you wonder? Well, it's a work in progress that will evolve as I continue to evolve. I didn't plan on doing something new. And then, surprise, I had to make some quick changes. And I kind of thrive on it. I kind of thrive on change. Change is a great way to take yourself to the next level. So this is going to be continue to be a work in progress, a little bit like improv. You will start to see and hear changes as my podcast and marketing team Help me develop the next version of the show that builds on my brand and on you, my loyal audience. You'll also see some new initiatives and offerings that will spin out from the show. It's super exciting to see what's already in 
the works. Nothing like a little downtime at the holidays to start your strategies for what you're going to do in the new year. And this has been one of the things I got a chance to work on. How's that for a little suspense? But that being said, I am open to your thoughts, suggestions, ideas, anything that can help me continue to tweak and niche the content in a way that serves you beyond the laughs and the entertainment. You can email me at ginatramarco.com or connect with me through the website at womenyourmotherwarnedyouabout.com. And most of you know where to find me on social media. So all of those things, please reach out. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you like to see or hear more of because we're going to be working on this for the next few months. So may you crush this year by studying and reaching your most amazing goals. And as always, thanks for listening and or watching this show. Thank you to loyal people who have like consistently listen and watch every show. I really do appreciate it. If you're not watching, you can watch on YouTube. Go check that out and you can find our YouTube channel through our website. Just click on the YouTube icon. And thanks for listening. I hope you are beginning this year in the most amazing way. And I will see you next time.